Does your cat even need vaccines? Can vaccines cause harm? Find out in this video. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you've yet to do so, click down there to subscribe. And then we click the link directly in the box below. I can send you a copy of my free book. Who is it? It's uh, Andrew. I'm here with Murray. He's due for a bit of a checkup. And you're going to talk to me a bit about vaccines again. Come on in, Andrew. Hi, Doc. Here's Murray. He's not super happy about being here. He's got this lump you got to check out and see. It's Dr. Jones. Let's just bring Murray up here. I want to have a little better look at him. See if we can figure out exactly what's going on. So Murray here, he, you know, you guys gave him boosters about, ah, it was about four or five months ago. He developed this lump up in here between his shoulder blades. You said it was a lot easier to just give them all in one spot. Seems to make sense to me. But it's been grow growing pretty fast. I mean, it was there, um, about a week or so after the vaccines, it's gotten bigger. Now it's probably about this long. It's about five centimeters and it's growing. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I was trying to do the best for him and uh, gave him the shots. Do you think the shots could be a problem? So this lump here on Murray Andrew, um, it actually feels to me fairly large. It is very irregularly shaped in between the shoulder blades. Um, I can almost feel little nodules sort of extending off of it and you know it's as you said you've initially felt a small lump after the vaccines now it's this thing which is now growing it's grown rapidly i'm a bit concerned there is a type of cancer uh, called fibrosarcoma um, i'm hoping that's not what it is um, we're gonna have to be doing some tests biopsies figure out exactly what's going on um, there is a fairly small risk that it can happen. Uh, it seems to be, especially with cats, post the rabies vaccine, the feline leukemia vaccine, which is in part what we gave Murray. Um, I've been hoping that's not the case. Um, and, you know, before we go into more, I know you're probably gonna go on the internet, read a bunch of things about it. It isn't really a great, it's a challenging type of cancer to treat in terms of surgery wise it's difficult to get it all in surgery uh, there's radiation chemo uh, but let's not just sort of go there yet let's just kind of figure out what's going on um, okay murray let's try to figure out what's going on with you kitty cat well doc well i, I you know i never had an idea of it no, I thought that shots could, you know, cause something serious. What did you say? You think there is a possibility he could have some type of cancer, fibro something oma? A type of cancer uh, called fibrosarcoma. Whoa, uh, I never would have imagined that. I mean, I, I was just trying to do the best for him. Uh, but you said you're going to be doing some tests. You're going to try to... You said a biopsy or something, try to figure out what's going on, a bit of blood work, etc. I'm assuming you're going to cover all that because that uh, sounds like, you know, the vaccines you gave caused it. And remember you talking about surgery. Yeah, I, I don't even know if I would have thought of vaccines. Anyway, I hope things are going to turn out okay for Murray. I mean, I love this cat in spite of the fact that he does beat up my dog. He eats far too much food. He's not always the most pleasant guy, but I love him still much the same. Want to keep him healthy. I want him to be around and uh, you just you know, do what you got to do. But, you know, I mean, I, whatever you do, just don't be telling me to do things that are going to harm him. So unfortunately, that's not an uncommon scenario. The one I just sort of played out. Veterinarian um, who's seeing a client's cat who's been vaccinated, coming in with a lump. No, Murray doesn't have that, but you might just as easy could have been Murray or could be even be your cat. If your cat has had multiple vaccines, 
especially in one spot up in between the shoulder blades, especially if it's in current, it's being those vaccines that have adjuvants, you know, such as feline leukemia vaccine, the vaccine, rabies virus vaccine. In my opinion, we've given far too many vaccines far too often, given in the wrong places and with often the wrong type of ingredients. This information comes from Dr. Jean Dodds of Hemopet, and I'm actually gonna be sharing her suggested or advised feline vaccine protocol. But in it, she talks about adjuvants and how that adjuvants make up only 15% of the vaccines for dogs and cats, but they're responsible for 85% of the vaccine reactions. And no more so is that highlighted than with our cats. And that we know, first of all, adjuvants. So these are things that are added to the vaccines to help improve its effectiveness. But most of the time, the type of vaccine that is adjuvanted is quote unquote, a killed vaccine. It's just say a portion of what would maybe represent the rabies virus. They add in an adjuvant to actually stimulate the immune response to get a higher uh, protective level of antibodies. But those specific adjuvants, you know, such as the ones often there, mercury is an example of what is used as an adjuvant. Um, they're the ones that can cause those vaccine reactions. And they're the ones that are probably most linked to the, this really serious type of cancer, this fibrosarcoma. The incidence of fibrosarcoma can be as low as one in a thousand uh, cats getting vaccines. So can you imagine? I mean, it's not that many animals. And you know, if, if you're going to tell me that there was that risk of people getting a type of potentially fatal cancer due to vaccines, a thousand people get it, uh, you know, and one of those people is going to get this fatal type of cancer, there'd be this huge outcry. Yet still today, there are still many veterinarians giving the wrong type of vaccine, far too many vaccines, far too often, um, with, with that potential risk. I, first of all, not only is it crazy making, secondly, it's just, it's just plain wrong. A note about titer testing. So what this is, is your veterinarian doing a blood sample, measuring to see if your cat has protective level of antibodies. And this is something that is done um, after a vaccine. So what mo many of the progressive veterinarians are suggesting is before you look at even doing a vaccine after the sort of kitten sets of vaccines, you're getting a titer test done to see if any additional vaccines are needed. And as an aside, Dr. Dodd says that, you know, any level of measurable antibody means that the vaccine is still effective and your cat is still protective. Uh, protected against, you know, FERCP, so the feline viral rhinotracheitis, tracheitis, Khaleesi virus, panleukopenia, and or the rabies virus. So if you're going to be giving your cat a vaccine, such as the friendly Murray here, the one big thing you're really going to want, going to, want to be making sure that your veterinarian is using non-adjuvanted vaccines. Um, as an aside, research has now shown that the adjuvants in those specific vaccines are linked to first, just initial injection site reactions. You can get swelling in the injection site, say up in between Murray's shoulder blades. They've been then secondary associated with these injection site sarcomas, this fibrosarcoma, which I was just discussing. Then lastly, they've even also been associated with chronic inflammation in our cats. The core vaccine protocol that Dr. Dodd suggests, as do I, this includes FVRCP, so which is includes, those are three different viruses. You're vaccinated for feline viral rhinotracheitis, feline Khaleesi virus, and feline panleukopenia, also known as feline distemper. That vaccine booster would be given at eight weeks, followed up again at 12 weeks. It's key that you're using the non-adjuvanted FVRCP vaccines. Those are modified live vaccines. If it's required by state and or provincial law to be giving your cat the rabies vaccine, or say that you happen to have an outdoor cat who's in an area where there's a high incidence of rabies, then you wanna wait till at least 24 weeks before you're giving your cat the rabies vaccine. And you wanna really ensure that, is, that it is the non-adjuvanted recombinant DNA rabies vaccine. And that will be given at sort of 24 weeks and later. At a year after that, 
then my suggestion, as is Dr. Dodd's suggestion, is have a titer test done. See if your cat has protective levels of the FERCP, that feline viral rhinotracheitis, Khaleesi virus, panleukopenia, before you're giving that FERCP booster. See if your cat has, if he's had to have the rabies vaccine, see if he has protective levels of rabies antibodies. If he does, your cat, in my opinion, your cat doesn't need any of those vaccines and needs and may need no further vaccines. There are an array of different other vaccines, you know, such as for FIV, such as for FIP, such as for chlamydia. In my opinion, those are outside of the core vaccines. Those are one other vaccines that aren't necessarily that effective, potentially have been linked to side effects, you know, i.e. fiber sarcoma. Um, and third, in my opinion, really just are, are not needed to give your cat sort of the core protection that is needed, but at the same time, sort of balancing the risk of side effects. Because like sort of the last thing we want to be doing is, you know, thinking we're doing the right thing, bringing our cat into the veterinarian. A veterinarian is saying, you know, Murray's due for the vaccines, let's give him this whole series of vaccines and finding out that we're causing a problem. Not only are we, you know, not protecting our cat against something he, you know, never needed or really had a minimal chance of getting in the first place, we're actually hurting him. Like, can you imagine that the vaccines that your veterinarian has given has caused this really serious and pretty much untreatable type of skin cancer? Like, I can't. Thanks so much for watching this edition of the Veterinary Secrets of the Cat Vaccine Update. If you've yet to do so, click somewhere up there to subscribe. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.